So I'm the founder of Vidivet, basically trying to help people get veterinary expertise to get much faster, uh, much more reliably than previous. It was built with three sort of pillars, as easy as people to order something from Amazon, faster than Googling anything about your pet, but as reliable as speaking to a doctor about one of your own health issues. Part of the, the principle from Vidivet was that actually we want to help the profession by alleviating some of the pressure of, you know, what doesn't need to come into the practice. But rather than people Googling or speaking to our uh, our esteemed social media expert, we said, well, actually, do you know what? If we can give, give something that is as quick as all of these things to people with pets, but with our expertise and give people that work for us that flexibility, then actually it, it's serving both sides uh, of the coin there. We look to breed in ourselves as a, as a business owner. Is it a service... Um, that you you think that would be useful for breeders as well? There wasn't for breeders. We wouldn't have a profession. So, yeah. but I think the, the the key element here is responsible breeding. Getting the right information to people is key. Ninety percent of the questions that we get asked don't need to go into the clinic. Yeah. But it's stuff that you can give people a bit of advice and say, do this, do that, do the other, and everything mm-hmm. will be okay. If it doesn't get any better, then then come back to us and we'll you know we we pick it up from there. Or indeed, if it gets worse, let us know and we'll move on from there. And does that extend, you know, to the starting or thinking about owning a pet as well? It will do in future. I think what yeah. so many businesses do wrong is they dilute out from what their core is okay. too early. I guess it falls nicely into sort of why reviews was a solution to instill trust or give confidence to what you guys do as a product. What sort of concerns did you have before taking on reviews? We looked at various different reviews platforms. One of the things for us was that sort of validity of those reviews. And I think that was one of the things where reviews.io jumped out to others in that, you know, it was validated customer base. And I think, you know, what you want is people telling people who've had the experience. But the reality is, you know, having a reviews platform when you are a uh, either a public or a business facing platform has to be something that it shows the reality you know, people that have used your service um, and, and have gone, yeah, do you know what, actually, yeah, this this worked for me. And it instills confidence. You know, we, we look at conversion all the time. Sites that are relatively similar in size, those with have reviews and those that don't, those that have reviews, you know, have a considerably higher conversion rate. And it's mainly due to trust. I've always been an advocate of, you know, a positive response to negative reviews because it's an opportunity for you to show how good your service is, that you are on the other end to deal with any issues or on any unhappy customers. You very rarely get like, you know, two and three star reviews. You quite regularly yeah. get like, you know, yeah. one or five star. And, you know, we're in the fortunate position where we haven't had a one yet. I think it's interesting, isn't it? Because at some point, you know, obviously we hope to be at a business where you've got like, you know, 10,000 plus reviews and so on and so forth. And and it's easy to become apathetic, I think, once you go past a certain point. And obviously, you know, we're an early stage business and every bit of feedback is vital to us. And, and, and you know, as I say, from our point of view, especially, you know, when we're dealing in an area where it's with people's pets, a highly emotive topic. I think, you know, from that point of view, good and bad, you have to have the humility to go, yeah, thank you very much, or really, really sorry. Yeah. This is this is how we intend to, to take our learnings from what's gone poorly for you. Yeah, I see that you use our, one of our tools, social proof, social proof tools, to sort of really, you know, make that text content more impactful and more shareable. Is that right? We use a lot of the tools, and I think you know, from our point of view, again, we've touched on it earlier about the validity um, mm-hmm. and that sort of like you know, sitting there thinking this isn't just video vet saying because. We went through a phase when we were using our internal tool and that some of our posts had like, you know, quotes from our our existing customer base. But it was because it's us posting about us. There's always that. Is this a real review? And, and, you know, obviously it's quite nice having some of the different pictures and some of the different backgrounds. How does that that review space sort of grow with Vidivet? How does Vidivet grow and keep using reviews? We're quite lucky because we can be agile. We can pivot on things quickly, which is we're having that review process where people can say to us, this was good, this was good, that could have been done better. That helps us to actually work on our product. So, you know, for us, it's making sure that we give that opportunity to give that feedback to everybody. But doing it publicly, we think speaks volumes, you know, about us as a brand. We already know that this is a product that people would love to have. It's now a case of getting the message out there. And and as I say, that, that reviews platform just helps us polish what we're offering to people with the bits of feedback. What's on the horizon next for it? Is uh, you meeting milestones or are you, how far uh, are you going next? Yeah, it's, it's one of the, the joys of being a startup is that like, you know, it's like you say, it's the agility, it's the change, it's 
Mm. Like, where on earth do we go? We're just starting working with vet practices at the moment to try and help them take the pressure off. We 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 have a term for our community of vidi vetters, and, and like you know, once you're a vidi vetter, I think generally speaking, all of them go and tell their mates, and then they sign up, and you know, it's that snowball effect of you know a community of like-minded people. So that's really our focus for the next 12, 18 months is just expanding that community, listening to them, asking them, you know, we could, if people want more services from us, if they want us to introduce new things, then it's listening to them and saying, well, okay. It's a great point to finish on. I think I've, I've asked all the questions 